Fuck. Fuck. Samuel, how are you? Good morning. Morning, going well. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you so much. Axel, Virginia, good morning to you too. Here you are. Hello, Virginia. Hi. Could you please send me the email of the address the link of accelerator because I got, I am on my phone and I can't find it here. Oh yeah, sure. Thanks. Um I will send it to your email, okay? Good morning, teacher. Good morning. I just send you a link. Just one second. That's okay. I found it. Found it? Thanks. Uh, no worries. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you, Axel, for joining. This is our second class for Manage Project Quality. Any questions before we start? Mm -hmm. All right, how are you guys going with the online quiz? Did did you complete that last class or? So you completed Samu, Samuel? Yep, yeah, mm -hmm. completed. Um, I thought there was an observation though, don't mind. Yep, yep, there is an observation that we need to do uh, today. However, okay. um, yes, let, I, I will load it. Just give me one second. Okay, guys, I will run the observation at my end because uh, it's not in the system. I, I don't know what is going on, but uh, it's not in the system at your end. So I have it at my end. I will ask you some questions and the observation will be the recording of this class. Okay. So just stay with me one second and trying to load it. Okay. All 
All right, so we're going to start we're going to start the observation assessment. Again, it's going to be recorded. I'm going to load the observation assessment in your system uh, for you. Um, and I'm going to upload the video myself. Uh, you just need to participate in this observation assessment, which has been recorded uh, right now. The first um, situation or element that we need to discuss is how to determine the quality requirements of your project, how to identify how to determine probably that's better the quality requirements of your project all right so let's start with it if we need to determine if we need to identify what is the quality requirements of a project how we can start what 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 could be a good piece of information for us to understand what is the quality requirements All right, so let's let's just get back a little bit. The assessment is about quality, and we need to determine what are the quality requirements because not all projects, not all projects have the same quality requirements. Is what? it the yeah. the policies and procedures about quality of the company? Exactly right. So well done. So the first thing that we need to know is to find out what are the policies of that particular company in terms of quality, all right? And that's why last class we talked about it and we said for us to start the process, we need to read, we need to ask if we don't have it, what are the quality policies? What are the quality processes, the procedures that apply to that particular company? And we explained this last class in the following terms. For some companies, quality is really important and they have, a differentiation in the market because of that quality. For other companies, quality is not what really matters. What really matters is service, what really matters is design, what really matters is uh, to have good prices. And we talk about the IKEA example. Remember that we talk about it? So it's about understanding first, what is the quality procedures? What is the quality policy of that particular company that we are working for, that we are working with? If, if we are a third party associate. Well done, Virginia, fantastic. All right, so uh, is, is that clear to you, uh, Samuel? What is the first thing that we need to read when we understand, when we want to understand what are the quality requirements? Uh, so the policy and procedure for the business. Yeah, that's it, well, that is the starting point. If the business does not have a policy about quality, then we, as project managers, we need to determine it. We need to write it. We need to ask for a meeting for the company to provide that quality policy. And that's one of the reasons I told you for project managers, it's much better to work for companies that have very good governance. So all these policies are already in place for you to use. But obviously when you work for a new company and a startup or a company that is a small that doesn't have good governance, then it's more difficult the work that you do because you need to create as a result of a meeting, as a result of a work that you need to do with the stakeholders, what is the quality policy of that company? All right, Exam uh, that was a really good uh, answer, um, uh, Virginia. All right, cool. Now we have the quality policy in front of our desk or in our computer. Now we need to look at our project. Mm -hmm. We can have a look at the project plan or we can have a look at the project charter and what is that that we need to read in that project charter or by default in the, uh, manage, in, the, in the project management plan for us to determine the quality of a project? What is the, and this applies for everything. What is the first thing in that project, not in the company because in the company is the quality policy, but what is the first thing in that uh, document, the project management plan, or in the project charter, because it's also in the project charter, that we need to understand now and that we need everybody to understand as well for us to determine the, the quality. The metrics and the data for the qualities? Almost there, almost there. Really good answer too, because if we don't have the metrics, how, how we can determine data, how we can determine what is quality, what is not. So that's really good. But before getting to the metrics, there is something that we always need to have a look before we talk about the project, we, before we determine quality. What is that? 
What is that that we need to protect all the time? That we need to really make everybody aware of that. The scope. The scope. Well done. Exactly right. If we don't understand what is the scope, that is a big problem. If people that is working for us or with us don't understand the project scope, how we can determine quality. All right. So the project scope will give us information about three elements for us to determine quality. Uh, Ian, can you tell me one of those elements in the project scope that we can use to determine quality? Um, the scope will say to us like the, the activities we have to do, the quantity, the... Mm, the activities, the activities will not be will not be in the pro, in the in the scope. It, they, they will be listed in the WBS. But the scope, yeah. the scope will give us three elements that will help us to determine the quality of the project. Uh, Virginia, one of those elements in the scope that will help us to determine the quality. Mm, I, I don't know. That's okay, that's okay, we, we get in there. And Samuel, you remember one of the elements of the scope that will help us to determine the quality? Uh, time. All right, all right, that is one, Let's stop there, that's one. Time will allow us to determine the quality. If we have a time frame of three weeks to complete a project, by default, we know that what really matters is to complete the output is not much about the quality. But if we have three months to complete a project, now we know that we have enough time. You know, it's like when you, when, when, when you have a problem with your car and you go to the mechanic and you go to the mechanic and say, look, I need the car fixed now because I'm traveling tomorrow. The mechanic will say, look, I will, I will, I will do my best just to fix it for you to do the traveling but the car may fail. The car may fail because I don't have enough time to do the right diagnosis of the car and to ask for the parts that I may need and so on. I may fix it for you to travel, but the quality of that fixing is not super. Do you understand that? And then you will say, yes, I understand that because I'm telling you that you need to fix this car in one day. Hmm? So timing of the project, the duration of the project will give us a lot of information about what is the quality expected in that project. All right, uh, what, could be, what could be another element that is not time? Thank you for that, Samuel. That could help us to determine the quality of a project, uh, Axel. No, it can be like uh, the goals for the project. Fantastic. That is not part of what I'm asking, all right? But that, is the that was my next question anyway. All right, so it's good that you answered that. Because the project goal, the project goal, which is going to tell us what is the output, will tell us straight away what is the quality expected. You know, like we are developing a new software that will have the best developers working behind it. We are going to develop a new software that will have uh, the best uh, technological resources for that software to be safe, for that software to be sustainable, for that software to be um, of sufficient quality for this company. So yeah, the, the project goal will give us as well information about the project quality, well done. But just coming back to the previous question, we're talking about the project scope and the project scope has three elements. Samuel has said one of them, which is the time. And we all understand now that if we don't have time and the company is asking us to complete a project in a time that is very tight, we know that the company is not expecting, is not expecting, stakeholders are not expecting quality at high level, all right? But if the company is telling us, look, take the time that you need, then we know that in terms of quality, we can have a better output, all right? So for the scope, time, what else? Ian, what is another element of the scope that we need to understand for us to determine the quality? The cost. The cost, of course. What is the budget? We have? Well done, Ian. Because if we have if we have good budget, if we have a good budget, 
Of course, that is telling us that we can hire the best experts, that we can hire or contract the best suppliers, that we can hire the best uh, team members or, or, or call the best team members to work in the project. So, of course, the budget is, 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 is going to tell you a lot about the quality. Hmm? So um, that's good. That is number two. Virginia, what is number three? We have the time, we have the budget, what else? Not yet, Axel? Axel? The, rest of, uh, the rest of we have for that? No, the, the output is different. That will be a result of everything that we do, that we do. Uh, Samuel, what will be the last element? Uh, so we've done timeline, budget, and then resources. Correct. I think Axel said that. Of, ah, Axel say it. Sorry. Sorry. Fantastic, Axel. Resources. I just heard uh, resources. Resources. Why? Because if, if we have the best resources, the best machines, all right, if we have the best software, the best tools, we have the best factory, we have the best people, of course the quality is going to be superb. But if we are doing this project in a small warehouse or in a factory that doesn't have the, the latest um, state-of-the-art machines, or if we're working in a company that the computers are you know, struggling to run the processes, then we know that the quality is not going to be high. All right? So extremely important to, 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 to let, let's just recall what we have said so far. For us to define the quality, to, to determine the quality, we need to know, first of all, what, what Virginia told us, which is the quality policies and procedures. All right, cool. The second thing that we need to need, uh, according, according to the class, was? Your scope. What is the scope? Oh, uh, yeah. And the scope will tell us what is the budget of that project, what are the resources of that project, what is the timeline of the project? Okay. Number three, what is the project goal? Because the project goal is going to describe what is the output. And the output is basically a sentence that is describing that output in terms of quality. So fantastic. Now we have three really good arguments to determine that we have um, enough information for us to determine what is the quality requirements of the project. All right, now, once we have defined that, once we have, once we have defined what is the quality of the project, we need to consult, we need to consult that quality. And we need to consult that quality with who? With all the team. With all the team. How, how do we call, how, but, but more than all the team, but all the team is good, but, but what is the technical word that we use in project management? to talk about the team, to talk about the project sponsor, to, to talk about everyone that is interested or impacted in the project. What is that technical St word? Stakeholder. Stakeholders. Stakeholders, Virginia, well done. So stakeholders will, we need, or we need to tell them, all right, now you need to tell them, now I, I am the project manager, now I know what is the quality of the project because of the budget of the project, because of the resources because of the timeline, because of the project goal, because of the company policies and procedures. Now I know what is the quality expected in the project, but I need to consult it with you. I need to consult it with you so we all agree, you know, that that is the quality of the project, all right? So well done. After we have described what is the quality of the project in terms of uh, quality policies, uh, scope and project goal, now we, we, we have an idea that we have to pass through uh, stakeholders in the business. Well done, well done. All right, so with that, with that feedback from the, from, from the stakeholders, now we have an agreement in terms of quality, all right? Now everybody has a clear expectation of what will be the quality of the project, okay? So now we have defined the first element that is extremely important for me to provide to the school in terms of saying Virginia knows about how to determine the quality of a project. Samuel knows 
about how to determine the quality of the project, the same for Axel and Ian, all right? So I have to ask you again, just to find out that we are clear with that. All right, let's just wait for Gonzalo. Gonzalo is joining. Gonzalo, good morning. Gonzalo, join us when you can. We are doing an observation assessment. All right, cool. Let's just wait for Gonzalo to join. So Virginia, quickly, for us to determine the quality of the project, what do we need to do? Well, first we need to look at the policies and procedures of the company. And then we need to determine the project scope that is uh, that it has three elements, which are time, budget, and resources. And after that, we get a goal and an output, and we need to consult it with the stakeholders and agree everyone the same quality. Fantastic. Sorry to be repetitive, but again, it's because it's an assessment. Uh, Samuel, how can you determine the quality of a project? So basically going back, um, so quality policy and procedures from the business. Um, if there is none, you need to do a meeting with the company for them to provide one. Um, then you need to look at your scope. So basing on your timeline, resources and budget, um, you can estimate what you may be aiming at for quality and then look at the goals. Um, so what is the aim? Um, and it sort of describes the output you want. Fantastic. What about the stakeholders, Samuel? I forgot about stakeholders. <laughs> um, you got to let the stakeholders know um, and check the quality um, and get an agreement with um, the stakeholders on the quality that you're aiming for. Awesome. All right, Axel. Um, so this question, uh, again, is for you. H how you can determine the project quality? Uh, first, we need to identify the quality of the company, the procedures and rules. And the After policy. that, we need to, the policies and procedures, yeah. yeah. After that, we need to put like uh, the scope timing, that uh, contains the timing, the budget of the company, and the resources we have for that. And when we have all the information, we need to consult with the, all the stakeholders for the company. Yep. And, and, if, they, and, and if they agree, now we have. I agree. We can con continue with the process. Exactly. Yes, because we have to determine now what is the quality of the project. Well done, um, Ian. Some someone asked you in the street. Someone asked you as a consultant. Ian, you are a project manager. Can you tell me how can I determine the project quality of a project? What What would you tell them? First, you need to find the policy and procedures of the company. If they don't have, you need to do it. Um, then you define the scope. You need to analyze the time, the budget, and the resources you have. Um, then you will uh, say the, the outputs, what the, the project will, will bring to the company or what the, the, the project goal the, the project goal is telling us the output yeah. yeah and then you discuss with the stakeholders about your 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 scope and everything about the quality expected yeah. Yeah. and if they agree what happens uh, if they agree you have your quality procedures you have your quality procedures, you have, you have the quality of that project written and approved. Awesome, awesome. Gonzalo, so this is an observation assessment. It's being recorded and this is going to be used for your observation assessment. It's not in the system. I am reading the questions and you are answering the questions live, All right? So the first question of the observation assessment is, all right, how we project managers, how we project managers, how we determine project quality, you need to provide information, skills and knowledge for me to determine that you know about this item. So if someone asks you, Gonzalo, how can you determine the quality of a project? What would you tell to that person? 
Um, first, we need to check the if the, the policies um, procedures of the company, if they don't have uh, uh, if they don't have uh, the, the policy procedures, maybe like a startup, you have yeah. to create them. Um, or help to create them. Yeah, yeah, help. Yeah, correct. Um, yeah. Uh, then you have to determine uh, determine the scope of the um, of the company budget, resources, um, and time, and then uh, define. Um, the goals of the company. So for, for to, to know the quality, the, the quality standards, you will have to determine the, the goals of the project. Um, exactly, the goal of the, the, go, the, goal, the, the goal. goal of the project, not the, goal of, not the goal of the company, and the scope of the project, not the scope of the company. I, I know that you just got confused uh, with that, but I know that you know. Just uh, yeah. that. Um, uh, after that, you uh, communicate the goal of the project, um, the, the scope to the stakeholders. If they are key, agree, uh, you you can start the project. Okay, correct, correct. Well done, well done. All right, once, once everybody, once, once all the stakeholders agree with the quality expected, then we can start. Well done, Nanda, um, you need to determine the quality of a project. How do you do it? Uh, determine how the uh, quality of the project? Yep, please. Uh, we just need to look at the project scope, look at the, what's the actual, what we're aiming Yes. Of, the, of the project of the project and then we just compare it to what's going on at the moment yep is it already on the line or not yep and then we can uh uh we can discuss it with the stakeholder yep or the easiest way is we can like a uh, break down the the break break down the project into like a uh, work packages and yep. we can check like each uh it's we can check by what by one by one by the breaking down the project and we can discuss it with the stakeholder more specifically yeah you can do that too yeah and see okay. what they're gonna say if they say yeah if they're happy we can continue with the project that's it that's, that's it that's what i'm looking for you i'm looking for this for you guys to understand that quality is so important in project management we need to get people to agree on what is the quality expected if we if we have that agreement we can continue if we don't have an agreement, we cannot continue. So fantastic answer, well done. So everyone everyone is competent in this question, uh, number one. Uh, so that's good. Now, now we need to talk about how to implement the quality, all right? How to implement the quality. Because now we, we, we have finalized it with the first point, which is how to determine the quality. Now we, we, we know, and you express it perfectly, guys, well done. But now we need to now we need to implement quality processes for us to ensure that the quality that we all agree on will be the quality of the output. All right. So how we do the, how we do this? How we do this? All right. How we can ensure that the quality that we all agree on will be the quality of the project when when we finish it? What ideas? Ideas. What can we do to ensure? That this will be actually the case. Gonzalo, uh, ideas. Let me know if the question is clear, first of all. Can you can you repeat the question, please? Sure. So okay. so th this this is all we, we are doing like a cascade kind of assessment. Now we know what is the quality expected now we know now we have determined the quality all right so what is the next thing that we need to do we need to implement quality processes we need to implement quality processes in our project for us to ensure 
that this quality that we say it will be the quality day one, will be the quality the last day when we finish the project, all right? So how, what can, what can we do to ensure that that quality will be implemented across the entire project life cycle? The activity will be implemented or the activities that they need to be done to achieve the quality? And what activities specifically we need to run for us to implement that quality? Ideas. I know that's key, um, just getting ideas. Then I explain to you the concept and then I will ask you. So just trying to get ideas. Um, so we, we need to implement that quality agreement, yeah? Give me one second, guys. Okay, so now we need to implement the quality. How can we implement it, Samuel? Um, so uh, we really want, sorry, some way of uh, testing or inspecting yes. um, mm -hmm. as we go yeah. um, to see how it's going at various stages um, and see if we're actually hitting like goals and standards that we need yeah very very close very very close so when we test when we when we review activities when we test when we review deliverables you know what is the technical name that we use in project management what is that technical mm -hmm. because we are reviewing activities you are right that's how it is no, you, Audi you are, the company? What is that? Audi the company? Exactly right. Spot on. That's what it is. All right. We need to run project audits. Right. No company audits because the company is such a big thing. The project is this. All right. But all right. That, that is the key word, buddy. Audit. All right. That is what it is. So we need to perform quality assurance yeah. audits. Okay. Okay, guys. That's how we. That, that's how we. How we. How we. How, now that we agree on the quality, now we need to implement it. Okay. How we implement it through auditing. Auditing. Okay. It's just that it's called quality assurance auditing. Okay. So we need to perform quality assurance auditing of project processes, activities, deliverables, and everything that is involved in that project. All the plans and every, everything that involves project management has to be audited. And that's why we are learning this unit, isn't it? And we do quality through, throughout the entire project life cycle, from the very beginning until the very end, all right? But how we implement it? We implement it through quality, assurance audit or quality assurance auditing. And what are we auditing? The project processes, the project activities, the project uh, deliverables, the project plans. In other words, everything that we're doing in project management has to be audited, all right? Now, if, if, the, if, if we do the auditing and the quality is not matching the standards that we define it in the first step, which is determining the quality, we need to run an analysis. What is the name of that analysis? I am sorry, I know this, this unit is very, very hard, guys. Please don't tell me wrong. I know this unit is, is one of the most difficult units of the program. But we have talked about this. It's just that it's a lot of information I know. So let's just try. The first part, 
clear, determine quality uh, standards, and determine what is the quality of the project. We are trying to disclose and understand the second part. The second part is we need to implement the quality. So Axel say, all right, Santi, for us to implement the quality, we need to run project audits. And I was like, yes, that is perfect. Now, my question is, if you are running the audit and you find out that the quality that was planned, expected for a particular activity or deliverable is here, but the quality of that output at that moment is below what is expected, because this is below, this is below, isn't it? But this is also below, but this is also below, and this is also below. So the difference, the distance from this that is expected to what you actually got in terms of quality, that difference, that gap is important. It matters a lot. So what is the technical? What is the, it's actually a statistical name that may help you, all right? What is the technical statistical name for us to understand how bad that difference is? Uh, standard deviation. A standard deviation, all right? A standard deviation and variations, which is basically the same. For us to understand a standard deviation, we need to know, all right, if this is expected and we have different activities below, what is the standard deviation of all of those activities of the projects so far? All right. So the standard deviation is how far an element is from the average. And the average is the quality that is expected. So we need to understand that to define variance. What is the variance? All right, of the outputs against the expected project quality. Companies, they have policies and they are flexible with that variance. Some companies, they are very, very flexible with that variance because they don't care about quality. But for some companies, the variance is minimum. For some companies, like for example, the medical, in the medical and health industry, I don't know if you know this, the variance is zero. Zero, because it's the medical industry. In the automotive industry, the variance is minimum. It's like one in one million defects. And if you get more than two defects in one million, you need to recall that automotive, all right? Because life of people is there, all right? The variance in terms of clothing is huge huge like you know like and that's why you, you go to a, a shop and you get a, a shirt that is l and you go to a different one and l and it's going to be a different size it's because the industry is okay with it all right but we need to understand what is the variance in terms of what is expected and what we actually got all right so just to recall this just to recall this now we need to implement quality all right so how we implement quality first of all running quality assurance auditing auditing of what santi auditing of all the project processes all the project activities all the project deliverables all the project plans in other words all the project in its entire project life cycle first secondly we need to identify what is causing variance in terms of our quality metrics. What are the quality metrics? The standards, what is expected. And we need to take actions to minimize those variances, right? That is point number two that I want you to remember. And finally, we need to have a quality management system to record all the quality and audit data. All right, so I already explained this to you last class. Obviously, when we're in assessment situations, I need to be very specific. You are paying more attention and so on. I'm going to repeat it because after this second explanation, I'm going to ask you, okay? So I'm going to explain it one more time and then I'm going to run the questions straight away. So for us to implement quality, what we need to do? First, we need to run quality audit. We need to run quality Assurance audits, all right? Assurance audits of what? Processes, activities, deliverables, and plans. 
That means everything. That means everything. So we need to audit the entire project life cycle. That is point number one that, I, that you need to give me your answer. Point number two, all right? Now we, that, that we have run some audits, we need to we need to identify causes of variance. We need to find out what is the deviation, the standard deviation from what is expected in terms of quality and what we actually got in each one of the outputs, the deliverables as we advance with the project. And we need to determine if that variance will be accepted according to our policies, or if that variance is so big that we need to do the activity one more time that we need to repeat the activity, that we need to fire someone, that we need to find a different provider or supplier. We need to find out what is the variance because we need to take actions, remedial actions, all right? So that's point number two. We need to identify the causes of variance with our quality metrics in terms of what is expected. And we need to undertake a remedial actions to minimize the variance in coming activities. Okay, that's point number two. Point number three that you need to know when, when you implement quality is you need to maintain a quality management system, quality management system to record quality and to record audit data, which is what we discussed in the point number one. All right, let's see, let's see. Let's see how we go. All right, Axel. So you need to implement quality. Now you have determined quality. How do you implement quality in project management? Uh, like uh, first thing we need to do is like uh, run an audit for all the process we have in the in our project. Yeah. Like plans, process, and everything is in our project. Correct. We need to know how it is in the company. Yes. How it's running now. Sure. So after that, with the data, with that we have we can compare the results and make a standard deviation between how we are making and how we need to make. That's it. Yeah, well done. Yes, yes, right. And after that, like a, the final point, we need to check um, how we can implement and maintain all the quality process we need to do. And what system we need to use to do that? What is the name? Uh, my, maintain quality system. Quality management system. Quality management system, all right. And what we record in that quality management system? The, the quality process? We record, we record the, the, the data as a result of our audits. All right. All right. So we record the data because we did the audit. Remember that you told me, hey, Santi, we do the audit. All right, cool. But right. that auditing will give us information, will give us, and, and that information is data, right? Cool. All right, data. That's, number, that's, that, that's good. Now, point number two, now we need to compare what is happening against what is expected, which is the variance. And we do that using a statistical analysis that is called a standard deviation. Well done. Point number right. three, we need a quality management system to record all the project and audit data. Or you can say all the project and audit information. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good. Pero, but man, fantastic. Really good. Really good. Very pleased with that answer. All right. Um, Gonzalo, now we need to implement quality. How we implement quality in project management? Uh, so first thing, first things we're going we're going to do is to run quality audit. And we are going to audit all the processes, activities, the deliverables and plans that we have for the project. Uh, with the audit, we're going to identify causes of variances. So what is uh, expected against what we, what we already have uh, got on the project. Yep. Um, uh, we will have to identify the, the metrics that we are going to use to compare that variance. Right. Um, if there are variances, uh, we need to take actions to minimize them. Thank you. Thank you for that. And then we'll have to have a quality management system to recall all the quality standards we're going to follow and the, the, the audit records. Very good. 
Virginia, you need to implement quality in project management. Yes, you... uh, so to, to implement the quality in project management, I will run a project audits or quality project audits to see well the process, the processes, activities, the derivables, the plans. And that will give me the standard variation between what we want and what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and after that, I will have to maintain that quality. So I will do a quality management system to record the variance or the data. Now to record the data as a result of the audit, basically. Fantastic. Fantastic answer. Very good. Um, who is next? Nanda. You need to implement quality in project management. How do you do this? So we're going to implement the uh, quality. So we need uh, first after the quality is uh, defined, like we did before. So we need to commit with that quality. Like we need to stick on each team member head that this is the quality that we want. And then, uh, but still stick to the project requirements. And we need to manage the quality after like a after like a few of few percent is uh we do the like uh, part of the project we need to perform the quality assurance we need to perform the quality assurance to find the standard deviation of the variance and what is the name of that activity is is quality assurance quality what there is a word in between quality and assurance that you need to tell me the quality management system? No, no. Is that a deviation technique? No, no. it's the, the quality audit, all right? Oh, the audit, yeah, the that, audit. Because that is the word, the quality assurance audit or the quality audit uh, for assurance. Okay. All right, that is the key word that we need to remember. So far, so good, my friend, keep going, please. Okay, so after we find the, we do perform the quality assurance uh, audit yep. and record that in the quality management system. Yep. So we have that. We need to control that quality and make sure that we keep doing, keep stick with the quality uh, to the end of the project. Well done, well done. Of course, for us to do that, we need to take some remedial actions. We need to find out what is causing the variance and we need to fix whatever is causing that variance. So the next activities will be better, yeah? But might that was extraordinary, really good. Uh, Ian, how do you implement quality in project management? You're a project manager. You need to know how to implement quality in project management. You need to show me that you have the skills and knowledge as a diploma of project management to implement quality in a project. How do you do this? So first of all, we need to run um, quality audit. Um, to make sure what we are doing is um, how far we are from the standards that yeah. we plan. Um, then we will define the variation um, if we are too far or not of what we planned before. Um, see if the variation is acceptable for this project for Good the company. One. Good one, yeah. Um, if not, we need to do some remediation uh, to fix the problem. And after that, we, we need to do the quality management system. And yeah, that's it. Well done, well done. Fantastic, guys. Uh, everybody answered the question, yeah? I think so, Virginia did it, yeah, everybody. Well, I haven't. But, oh, you haven't. Sorry, sorry, Samuel. So okay. you, you need to implement quality management. Yeah. Can you please tell me in, in, in detail how you will do that. Yeah. So um, first of all, uh, you're going to have quality assurance audits. Um, so you're going to audit your activities, plans, deliverables, and processes. Yeah. Um, and then using your quality metrics, um, you're going to see what kind of standard deviation you have. Um, and then depending on the company's allowance of variation, um, you're going to see if it's appropriate. Um, and then you're going to maintain a quality management system to record the quality and audit information. Really good. Really, really, really good. 
Guys, how important is to remember this? I know, I know that in real life we are going to forget a few things about this. You know, it's normal, it's normal. But how good, how good were those answers? You know, just try to remember the word audit. If you remember the word audit, it will take you a straight away to standards, and then it will take you straight away to quality management systems to record data. So just you know any any person or any company that is asking you about how to implement quality just remember the word audit all right guys well done well done for that question do you have any questions so far everybody's comfortable with the assessment good all right so now that we have implemented quality processes through auditing through control to understanding of variance, through the use of a quality management system to record data. All right, now we need to implement quality improvements. Now we need to actually change things. Now we need to make things better. So how we do this, how we do this? Ideas, please. So, so, so far, just to clarify, so far. Now we have agreed on what is quality for the company, which is the first thing that we discussed. What is the quality policy of the company? What the scope is telling us about uh, what is the quality of that project and so on. We have understood that. We know that we need to get everybody in the same line, all the stakeholders, and we have an agreement. Cool. Now we need to implement quality. And now we know that we have to do that through auditing. Now we know that we have to understand what are the causes of variance. Now we know that we need to have a quality management system to record the data as a result of that auditing. Fantastic. But now, and with this, we finish the assessment, we need to implement quality improvements because project management is always, always thinking about how the next project could be better how the next activity could be better is one of the most important things about project management. I told you that already is constant improvement is critical in project management. All the projects are interconnected in a company. A company that has more projects, more likely the next project will be better than the company that has only done two projects. Experience matters in project management. That's why project managers that have work on more projects, they are called senior project managers because they know more about different projects that have been executed in that company. So for us to for us to improve, for us to improve, we have resources in project management. All right. And 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 and, and we record those 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 experiences. So so if we are running the next project, we can check what we could do better. If somebody else is running that project, they can check how we could do better. What is the technical name of that document? that we need to use in project management to actually improve the way we run projects. Uh, Samuel, please. Uh, lessons learned. Lessons learned, lessons learned. All right, so now we're talking about lessons learned because now we know, all right, this was the cause of an activity having a big variance and, and we need to record that in the project management system of K and that's clear, but we also need, need to record that as a lesson learned. Why? Because we need to avoid that situation to happen again. And the next project manager, the next project manager will not go to the quality management system to find out what went wrong and what could be improved. The quality management system is just performing and showing the data. The next project manager, or if you are working in the, in the next project, you will go to the lessons learned register, all right? Lesson learn, register to find out uh, what could be what could be improved. So, so, so well done. All right, that will allow us to review processes to implement agreed changes. All right, and then to continue with the project. So, here is my second question: If the variance, if the variance is so big that that output will not be accepted by the project manager. What do we need to do with that activity? Uh, Ian. 
Um, we need to to find some remedial actions to fix it. Yeah, but happens that the variance is so big, you know, because sometimes the variance is minimum and we can fix it, no problem. We don't affect the budget, we don't affect the timeline, we don't affect the resources, we, we fix it, all right? But in, in this particular case, which is my question, the variance is huge, huge. So what we need to do with that activity that is presenting that huge variance? Do it again? That's it, that's it. If the variance is something that is not within our quality, uh, our, our quality policies, because it's just below uh, what is allowed in terms of the standard deviation that we have done, then we need to say to the stakeholder or the person in charge of that activity, hey, look, sorry, we cannot accept this delivery. You need to repeat it need to do it again all right but that is problematic isn't it that is problematic for everyone very problematic because when we need to repeat an activity what will happen to the successor activity what will happen well, delay stopped yeah. we, we, are, we are going to experience a lack all right a project lack the, the, we, the, there will be a, that activity that was supposed to start next week no. So we need to call suppliers. We need to call a stakeholder. Look, sorry, but that activity needs to be pushed further. All right. So that creates a lot of disruption in a project. When you don't accept an activity because of quality issues, so you have a quality problem as a result of your auditing, you say this is a big quality issue. We need to reject the output. That is going to affect three things in the project. Samuel, Give me one thing that will be affected in the project. Uh, time. Fantastic. Virginia, give me another thing that will be affected in the project when you don't accept an output. Well, everything. <laughs> uh, time, the budget. The budget, thank you. Tell me another thing, uh, Gonzalo, that will be affected in the project if you reject an output because of quality issues. And the resources. The resources. So now we're in big shit. We have problems. When we are when we have problems, we have one solution. All right. And that solution for us to change the budget, for us to change the resources, or for probably the word change is not the best one. For us to have more budget, for us to have more time, for us to extend uh, the deadlines, we have a solution. What is the document name? for us to ask the project sponsor if we can have more time, if we can have more resources, if we can have more budget. What is the name of that document, Ian? Sorry, Santi, can you repeat the question, please? Sure. So just, just to explain the context, we are in sh big shit now because an output is not accepted. You know, like the quality is so below the agreements that we have with the stakeholders, remember? So we as project managers, we have the responsibility to tell that team member or that supplier, look, sorry, I cannot accept the output. You need to do it again. You need to do it again. But that will affect the budget, that will affect the deadlines, the timelines, that will affect the resources. In other words, you have something that is called scope creep. Scope creep, that's not good. When you have a scope creep, that's not good. But what can you do? The output doesn't meet the quality standards. What can you do? You need to reject it, all right? But you need more budget because more time means more money. You need more time to fix the situation because the, the successor activity will be delayed, you're going to have a project lag. Hmm? Remember that in project management, we have predecessor activities and we have successor activities, yeah? So the predecessor activity, no problem. The successor activity will have to be delayed. So that's a big problem. You need to stop contracts. You may be fine because a contractual 
situation. Right? So you are in big shit. We need to fix it. Right? How we fix it? There is a document that we need to pass through the project sponsor for us to have more budget, for us to have more time, for us to have more resources. And the project sponsor needs to sign that document. So, you know, the financial department of the company give us more time. You know, the director of the company approves that and give us more, uh, sorry, the financial department give us more money. The company director give us more time, all right? The companies that we're working with give us more resources. What is the name of that document that will allow us to, to get out of this big problem? I know that there is a document that we have to change the things, but yeah. yes. I what don't remember the name? the name. Like you said that we, we need to avoid to do this, but sometimes- Yes, yes. We but sometimes we have to. That's a really yes. good answer, brother. That doesn't matter. But I don't remember the name, That's sorry. No problem, no problem. But you understand the consequences of it. That is more important to me than you remembering the name of that document. The answer is perfect, brother, no, no worries. What is the name of that document, uh, Nanda? The change request. Correct. All right. The change request. So the change request is the document that will allow us to tell the sponsors we need more time, we need more money, we need more resources. All right. Because we need to improve this situation. We cannot just avoid it and just pretend that it didn't exist. I cannot accept this output. We need to repeat the activity but that will make the project more expensive, that will take the project manager more time to complete the project and more resources, all right? So that is, that is really, really good, all right? So again, we need to review all the processes in the project and we need to implement changes for us to fix the problem and the name of the document that we use to implement those changes is called the change request, all right? So that is it, that is it, that is it. On the point number three, I'm just going to explain the concept again, and then I'm going to ask you, and with that, we finish the observation assessment. So what have we discussed it today? How to determine quality first, then how to implement quality, but then how to improve quality. So you have gave me really good answers in terms of how to implement quality, yes. You have gave me really good answers in terms of how to, uh, sorry, you have gave me good answers in terms of how to determine quality, yes. You have gave me good answers in terms of how to implement quality, yes. Now you need to give me good answers in terms of how to improve quality. So for us to improve quality, we need to do two things. Number one, we need to go to the lessons learned register for us to find out what didn't work in the previous project, what is not working well in the current project, because everything that we found in the auditing, of course, of course it's in the project uh, quality system, but also it is your responsibility to take that and add it to the lessons learned register. So we need to read the lessons learned register to improve quality. That's point number one. Point number two, if we have a scope creep as a result of an activity not matching, not meeting the quality standards of our quality policies as agreed with the stakeholders, then we need to raise a change request to be approved by the project sponsor so we have access to more budget, to more time, and to more resources. And that is how we improve the quality of the project. All right, so um, Gonzalo, how we improve the quality of a project? What can we do? Uh, well, so first of all, we have to identify what's, what's happening in the activity or the deliverables that we are having some issues. Um, go to the lesson learned register to identify what maybe what was wrong before and compared to what, what is wrong now. So, so we can know what probably what we have to do. If we have changed something, we will have to apply for a change request uh, to the project sponsor, um, asking for more time, budget, 
or resources. Um, also, with the change request, we are going to let them know that the project is probably stopped and we have to redo it. Um, Not the project, but the activity. Uh, the activity, sorry. Yeah, the activity. Um, and yeah, after that, start basically start again the activity um, with more information to not uh, do it again in the wrong way. And that is improvement. Fantastic answer. Uh, just to, 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 to take advantage of what you have said, Gonzalo. Remember, when we start a project, we finish projects, all right? When we, when we start pro in project management, that is extremely important. It's one of the project management principles. When we start a project, we finish a project, but there is just one, one reason why we stop a project. And that reason is when a risk in our risk register is pointing directly to the project goal, all right? So when you do the risk register, you will have many risks, probably hundreds of them, but the vast majority of them will be pointing activities. Activities that you can change, activities that you can improve, activities that you can delete because they are not in the critical pathway, all right? But that is manageable. But when a risk is impacting directly the project goal, the frequency of that risk happening is high and the impact is high, then you have an argument to tell the project sponsor, we should stop this project because it's very likely that we are not going to complete it anyway. All right, I'm just taking advantage of what you say. I know it's a mistake, Gonzalo, but we don't stop the project. We never stop the project. That's why we have change requests. Change requests are for us not to stop the project, but for us to ask for more time to extend the deadline. Well done. Um, Axel, let me know you're ready. Uh, Virginia, you ready? Yes. So to implement yep. the quality improvements, we have to look at two things. First, we do we look at the lesson learned register to review the project and see where we fail and yep. what's the big variance. And then uh, because this creates disruption of the project, uh, we have to present a change request. Yep. That is a, co a document that allows us to tell the sponsor that we need more time and resources. Fantastic, fantastic. Your, your answers are very sharp, Virginia. I, I, I like that, mm -hmm. really, really good. Thank you. But, uh, Ian, when, what about you? So first of all, we need to go to the lessons learned to see, to register and see what we, um, the experience of the other projects. And then we need to ask for um, change requests to, to try to find more time and more budget and more resources to keep running the project. For the current and future projects. This will help mm -hmm. us with the current project 100% but also with future projects, because everything that we add to the lessons learned register will be used in the next project as well. So improvement is critical in project management. And this unit, this unit is extremely key, clear. Of course, it's very technical, but now you will remember it. How to determine quality, how to implement quality, how to improve quality. That's what it is. All right, well done, well done. Um, uh, sorry about this. Axel, you're next. How do you improve quality in a project? We cannot hear you, buddy. All right, sorry, teacher. No First, we need to review the, the process. If the standards are good or not compared to the quality processes the company needs. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't have the good quality, we need to improve and we can make it like a, with like, a, how do you call it? Um, yeah, with this, when the project is bad, you will need to make a change request mm -hmm. to the leader 
Yeah. And with that, we can start and improve the quality of the, comp the project. Well done. well done, well done. That's how it is, all right? So first, we need to check the lessons learned register, all right? And secondly, if an activity has such a big gap in terms of what is expected and what we got, then we need to raise a change request that has to be approved by the, by the project leader. The project leader is called the project sponsor. The project sponsors approve the change request. We need to follow the change request so it is actually completed. And in doing so, we improve the quality of a project. Well done, well done. Samuel, did you already answer this question? All right, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, so uh, first of all, we're going to lessons learned um, to record the issues that occur um, and review and implement agreed changes. Um, and then if the variance is too big, um, it's going to probably cause a disruption. Sure. And so we need to do a change request form um, to extend and change our scope. Well done. You, you, you are very similar to Virginia in terms of how you answer the questions. Very sharp, very down to earth, straight to the point, which is really good. I like synthesis. Well done. Um, Nanda, have you answered this question? Sorry, I'm confused. Uh, not yet. Go ahead, Mike. So uh, first of all, we need to establish the improvement goals, which is we can find in the lesson learned register. And sure. we can find out the activity that needs improvement. Yeah. And then secondly, we need to identify the possible strategies, how to improve it. And if we have the scoop creep, which yeah. is this a uh, I think it's a kryptonite for the project manager. Horrible. <laughs> so, true. Then, so we don't have a choice. We need to request uh, the, the, we need to do the change request because yeah. show must go on. And then we need to start, we need to end what we, what we start. And then after it signed by the project sponsor, we just, uh, we just prepare the written action plan to do the improvement. Well done. Guys, please notice how different Nanda answers the question compared to, for example, Samuel and Virginia. Okay, Different words, but exactly the same level of competency. That is really good to have these uh, different understandings of the same concept. But both uh, explanations are straight to the point in terms of what I'm looking for, which is you guys to demonstrate skills and knowledge uh, when managing the quality of a project. All of you guys, Virginia, Samuel, Axel, Gonzalo, Nanda, and Ian are competent in this observation assessment for the unit managed quality. Um, everybody or anyone that is watching this recorded class, uh, you need to contact me to do the observation assessment, please. Uh, guys, thank you so much. We have completed the, the assessment now. I'm going to stop recording because um, it's an assessment, it's not a class. So uh, we continue talking, but I'm going to stop the recording just for you guys to know. Class. Yeah. And, and I haven't found the record of the class in the Accelerate. Could you just send me the link of the last will, class? Yeah, I will send you the link. Um, the issue is that the cloud recording is full. So I am recording this in YouTube as an unlisted video. So I will, I will I will send you the link of of, of last class, Yurima. Okay, because I need to do the assessments and I want to see the class first. First. Yes, a hundred percent, of course. Let me let me have a look at your platform. I just want to check how you're going.
My system is not loading, man. Would you mind? Would you mind to go to your accelerator and share your screen with me? Yeah. Uh, just a minute. Okay. I just got connection. Yeah. Yeah. Just got connection. Yeah. Okay, there are a few things. There are a few things that you need to do, but not too much. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you. Just to show you what is there you need to do. Just so I slow the system today. There we got it. It's been completed. Number two completed. Completed. Complete, complete number five, number six, I need to do marking, number seven, you need to complete Manasberg integration, the online quiz, okay. Mm. I think I did. It says that it's in progress, but probably you didn't sign it. It could be that you didn't sign it. Okay, okay, I will check. Have a look at the at the uh, unit number seven, the blind quiz. Uh, unit number eight, I need to do one marking day. Unit number nine has been completed. Unit number 10, I need to do marking. Unit number 11, I need to do one marking. And okay, and this is the last unit that, that, that we need to do. So we are right now in the in the unit number eleven. So the, you you only need to do one online quiz for the unit number seven. That's it. Yeah. Everything okay. else everything else is at my end. I need to mark it for you. I will have I will have everything marked for you next week. Okay. Yeah. Um. Could you just send me the link for the last class, please? Yep. Yep. I will send you. I will send you the link to the lesson. Okay. Right. Thank you, Sandy. Congratulations on your observation today. It was pretty good. Thank you. See you next weekend. So, Axel, how are you, mate? All good, teacher. All right. Yeah, I was uh, I was looking all the system because I am new here, so I don't know how to make all the assessment and everything. Sure. So in my Accelerate, I just have three lessons. It's all right because I just have the start with manage price time. This is my first. Yep. Let me just have a look. I need to check my system. Oh, you're right. You're right. Only three units. Why? Only three units. which are the technical block. Oh, yeah, 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 I know why, 
I know why, no worries. It's because uh, we are finalizing the cycle with the next class, okay? So the next class will be the end of this cycle. And then we start a new cycle for you to complete the other nine units. So the program has 12 right. units. The, pro the program has 12 units, but this, you, you started in the last block, which is the technical block. All right? All right. Which is yeah, for, for the reason you have like a, with the old classmates, you have like a more information because yeah, man. for my first class, I don't have nothing. And that's why like, Man, I don't get nothing because I don't have nothing information, no? Of course, the other students, so I, done, the other students have done uh, eight units more than you. Oh, yeah, I understand why. Eight units. So, so, so they are pretty good as you noticed today. But, but you did pretty well, man. Like, seriously, it was not an easy unit. So don't worry about your accelerating not showing the other units. Once we finish this cycle, which is next unit, so two weeks more, then uh, all the other units will be added to your system. All right, so I need to do this assessment for the project match time. Yeah, so let me check what you need to do so far. Give me just one second. So can you see my my screen? Yep. It's just loading. All right. So for the first class that you had, Manus Project Time, you need to complete the online quiz and you need to complete the observation assessment. For the class number two, you need to do the lesson and the online quiz. And I will I will do the observation assessment because you did it today. So I will add it. And this okay. is the and this is the next class, so don't worry about this yet. This is for next class, right. and it's the last class of this cycle. Then you will start with the next class, which will, will be Manus Project Scope, which is the first class of the program. All right. All right. So what you need to do to catch up, buddy, is just do this online thing. quiz this and observation of Manus Project Time. And for this quest, for this observation, I'm going to show you how it is done. So it showed you some questions like, for example, all right, you need to develop the work breakdown structure. So what you need to say here is, yes, I have the skills and knowledge to develop the WBS. For example, if I am working on a project, I need to break it down in its small components or activities. This will allow me to determine what is the duration of a given project. So the, the observation questions are, are about you saying that you have the knowledge or you saying, no, I don't have the knowledge, I need help. So one or the other. But if you, if you say, yes, I have the knowledge and skill, then you need to explain the concept a little bit. All right. That's it, that's it. But you always need to follow, to fill that space with, with your knowledge and skills. All right. All right. So that, I don't, I, I, when I can find all the information for this, for example, for this, Good question. Because I don't have the class for that, for manage branch time. Okay, okay. So you find the information two ways. One is in the recorded classes. So your recorded classes, I'm gonna show you where they are. If you click here, this little button, So your first class was January 6. So here is the recording, you see? So that is where you find it. That's where you find the class recording if you need to watch it again. Uh, the last class and this one have not been added, but I will be adding this in the next few hours. 
okay? And but where I can find that, uh, I love that. So I'm gonna show you. you. You need to click this little calendar icon here. You see this one? All right, the calendar. And then you open the month, and then you you have the classes, and then you just click on them. Click on them, and you say watch the recording, and that will open a new window. For you, All to, right. for you to watch. You know, this is the the recording of that class, for example. All right, I got it. You see? That is called. So that's how you do. All right. All right. Um, what else? So that's for you to find the classes. And that's it. That's it. Because uh, I tried to download the. Ah, the other the thing book. is the resource. The re yeah. Did you download it? I can't. The, the, when I put the download, the, the page says like uh, it's like a fail, something like that. Let me check. Resources. Student resources, PM book, this one? Yeah, exactly. When I put, it's wrong. Is that is that loading on my end, Look, It's on that? Mm. It's not. So check it out. Otherwise, I will send you. It's, it's, it's a big attachment. I cannot send it by. It's a huge book. Yeah, right now it's working. Beautiful. You see, sometimes the platform is very slow and doesn't allow the downloads, but it's working now. That's good. So now you know how to access the recordings. Now you know what you need to complete. All right. Yeah. Do the observation. And that's it. I will see you next class, my friend. All right. Thank you, Santi. Right. No, thank you, my friend.